All right, welcome to On My Block, Packers podcast. I'm your co-host, Mike Wall, along with Packers all-time leading rusher, Amon Green. Amon, how we doing? I'm doing good, Mike. Man, I'm doing good, Mike, man. Sitting under a blanket of blizzard snow right now. It just literally dropped. Like, I just did a show at 11. It's now noon. We're recording this at noon. Or no, sorry. I did it at noon. Recording it was one. Between 11 and 1 o'clock, it dropped 20 degrees outside. 20 degrees. In oh yeah, Austin. We we're getting these wow. things on our phone. These like public service announcements. They did this I, last year. Oh, I'm telling you what. So two years ago, before we moved here, they had that whole grid problem because Texas get to go off grid because they're you know it's Texas. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the grid froze and everybody was. Yeah, man. I, I'm I'm waiting for like uh, you know squirrels to fall off the roof because they're frozen solid, man. They don't know how to deal with this kind of weather. I'm not they sure. They can't. They never. That's some of the species down there never been in cold, super cold that's weather what like, what, like what we get, man. So what happens? So what happens is because everybody's got pools here, underground plumbing and everything. The I guess pipes. what happened? Yeah, the pipes all all burst. So I guess when we were here last time, the first time uh, my son and I came out here was like February, March, and it just happened. And we went over to my buddy's house, and dude, his his whole backyard was just uh, you know everything was tore dug up because they were, all the pipes were blowing up but. same thing happened with marco up in dallas because he yep. was up there last year and when I, I came to visit hang out with him for a weekend and that's mm-hmm. what he had people in the backyard ripping out the yard ripping out the pipes and putting new stuff in so he's just you know how marco gets he gets that's why he's losing that hair on the top <laughs> he, he losing his loss brother <laughs> all right hey, yeah. look, hey quick read here basketball's yeah. back bet online reminds you remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season you'll always find the latest odds team matchup and both player news and game trends at bet online and as your continued source for all sports wager information bet online features live betting free contests and giveaways all season long it's always the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events, whether that's National Football League, NBA, mm-hmm. NHL, MMA, tennis, boxing, esports, even golf. So head to betonline.ag. That's betonline.ag to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use your promo code Believe B L E A V to receive your awards. Bet online where the game starts. This week, probably the first thing we want to talk about because it's so important to the world. <laughs> yeah. Is not uh, it is that Jair Alexander made the Pro Bowl. Pro Bowl voting came out last night. Yep. So Jair is the only Packer that made it. Ag. No surprise. Can, can, well, okay. So I guess there's two surprises. One, are you surprised that he made it? Two, are you are are you feeling like there should be any? Is there anybody else we could put on that on that team right now? Yeah, uh, I'm not surprised because if you remember when our, our playing days that Pro Bowl years are kind of like, what's the word? What's the, what's the thing? Like a, It's like the virus or a, a, a wave of stuff. Like that wave hits people early in his, you know, like for when Zaire jumped on the map. Like, for example, myself, I learned this in an old veteran. I can't remember who explained it to me in the Packer locker room, but they said, the year you should go, you won't go. So 2000, I had my year of 1,000 yards came off the bitch. Mm-hmm. Everybody, all my teammates, all y'all was like, he should go. Mm-hmm. You don't go. But mm-hmm. then you go the year you go, you know, the next year. But mm-hmm. then also then for your sake, years on down the line, if you, you have a bad year, you're still going to go because the fans and some of the other players out there that is not in your locker room, mm-hmm. you know, still respect you. Or you Got still, it. you know, you played up to a certain par to say, you know, he's at the same level that he's been at previous years. And I just say in terms of Zaire – even if they're not. And so this is one of them years that the whole team and Zaire being one of them as a leader, as a playmaker, does he still have, does he have the moxie? Yes. He has the moxie because we talk about it. We get annoyed about it every day, but he's still a player to respect in that backfield or in that defensive backfield that other players respect around the league, because if you mess with him enough, he's going to show up, you know, you get in his face enough. He's not going to back down. He's going to step up to the plate. So for that reason alone, good job to for him. But just know now, hey, you got to get that game up because one more, two more years of like this, he won't be on that ballot anymore. And then, so that's what you got to be aware of, aware of as a player. And just speaking of facts, not nothing against him as a, you know personally. I have not met him yet, but I just know he's a, you know he's a hard worker as what he does, watching him, what he does on the football field. Yeah, he's and he's one of those guys that uh, 
he has the respect of players. Yes. Um, so, you know, it's like, it's, it's funny because like Tua is the, number, is the leading vote getter for the of AFC, course. but he's not going. But, but this right. is like for a guy like, you got to remember a guy like me. So uh, the two years prior to me leaving, I so found 2002, yeah, 2002. So, the, so my fourth, fifth, no, so my fifth, sixth, and seventh year in the league, I thought were my three best years in the league period. Right. I didn't go to the Pro Bowl. I had two first, I had two first alternates and I had one, I didn't get any votes, but I also, mm. but I found out cause we had pop key. I found out that I was never in the top, never in those, all those years mm-hmm. in the top 10 from fans. Really? I didn't work hard at it. Like, so, you know, there's probably mm-hmm. offensive line. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta work a little bit if you're an offensive line to get that. Yeah, coming. that's true. Yeah. But I was getting, I was getting, uh, you know, top three from the players and from the coaches. I wasn't getting top 10 from the fans. Hmm. So when I, so when I see, like when I see Tua, I'm not, you know, I don't care one way or another if he goes, mm-hmm. but when he gets top billing from the fans, but everybody else votes in the other guys, I find that I have a little bit refreshing, I guess. <laughs> I, I, I can't lie to you. I find it a little bit refreshing. Right. And it's kind of to my point because the players know, we know the fans is just going off the frills. Oh, he has Tyreek Hill. He has a new toy and he's doing, you know, he's doing what any quarterback that we could do because we could throw the ball at least 30 yards to Tyreek. So that's what the fans and sometimes that's where that's, that's why it's separation for that. And we are the players who we are and there are the fans out there who we love and, and dear, but sometimes you're like, Hey, slow that, slow your roll, <laughs> slow your roll. I think he shot. I think Keyshawn Nixon is leading in some category in return yards already. Even even though that even though he's only been doing it for like a handful of games, right. he would have been the only guy. It's, I mean, it's obviously like it's not enough sample size. But if he would have started from the early, beginning of the year, obviously mm-hmm. he would be in. I mean, he's been the one guy where like if you were if you were to say to me who's the Pro Bowl player on this team right now, I'd be like oh, right. Keyshawn Nixon. I would say it was him. And I know yeah. it's a special teams thing and everything. He's been playing pretty well on defense as well. But you'd say special teams wise, this is the guy. He's been kind of. I, Jesus, in some of these games, he's like half our offense. I mean, really, right. as far as field position, the way th- the way things change out when he's in the game. Yep. Um, he's showing up on some, the field. Something else came out that was interesting. We've had all these communication things. There's a talk about all the hand signals, and you know, there's a whole deal about that. But then apparently it came out that uh, the, the Packers skill position players don't watch tape together, like practice film. <laughs> and I went – what you the just, prince toast like you went, what in the absolute hell is going on around here that you guys that the quarterback isn't watching practice film with a young receiver group forget i mean tight ends running backs yes of course but of anything you'd go if i if we're watching this tape and you already know that we have like signals and we have like a second offense right you weren't watching film it just We've talked about this ad nauseum, man. Like this is yes. just another example where you go, like we. You might not want to hear it, but we haven't been wrong, like, right? This is, and this is the problem. It, this makes sense. It, it does. One hundred percent makes sense. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense on this season, and it actually is a little disappointing because I feel that players, a player like I know Aaron, yeah, a player like that, I thought would have the accountability to do what he was doing because he was watching film. He was breaking down to say what he was saying to his younger players. Now, now it makes sense why the younger players are like doing their own thing, basically taking time to, you know, to learn the plays, learn the formation, not catching the ball because there's no, no accountability there from the leader first, the person that's well, but, doing it. But MVP I, I, guy, so. I'm agreeing with you. But I'm. All, but the only thing I'd say is, the coaching staff is determining who's meeting with who. That's I mean, you know, I'm, yeah, they're all in there too. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah, they're included. Clear. No, yeah, they're included. I just want included. to be clear. It's not. Yes. It's not like Aaron Rodgers. No, no, I'm no. sure it was like, hey, you know what? I don't want to watch film of those guys. No, no, no. Right. No, coaches yeah. included. No, coaches included because, I, yeah. Oh, so this explains everything. It, this gives a little sheds a little light on things, yeah. and this season and maybe previous seasons as well. You know, maybe they were having the. Not having the health issues and some of the things going on the past this year that went on, it might have went on last year. It's just we had everybody healthy. You know, we had guys step up. You had Zadarius last year go down with the back, but then what happened? Rashard Gary stepped up. So all the stuff was masked 
by good players. Devontae Adams, there, yeah. Devontae yeah. Adams. Sure. Zaire Alexander being healthy, even though he was out. He, he was out. But then what happened? Ra, Ra, Razul Douglas. That's oh, had a big year, yep. Had a big year. So now when – as we and this is commonplace for when you have a team that has been good and now injuries uh, changing. You have that Nathaniel Hackett gone. Mm-hmm. You have little things like that happen. Now you like – you bring the uh, the curtain back. And you're like, oh, okay, you know. So it kind of opens, agree with you more. It kind of opens your eyes, and and now it makes sense. This is right. like we, you and I have talked. About, I think we talked about it with the Packers, but I know we certainly talked about it with some other teams, including mm-hmm. the Dolphins that I used to be with. Is uh, the, the running backs wouldn't meet with the the offensive line and the quarterback on Fridays for blitz pickup, and you go, you, I I think this was maybe with Miami, but I went, mm-hmm. you know, I I heard that. I remember I heard that for the first time. I went, you 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 don't do what? Right. You don't the running backs aren't. Learn, they're part of blitz pickup. They're an integral part of blitz Big pickup, part, right? and and you're not involved in the meeting. Oh, that's and and you and we give up sacks all the time because you don't know where to go. Oh, you know, it's like yeah. It, yeah, it's 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 amazing to me when high school teams do things a certain way, college teams do things a certain way, and you get to the most elite level. And some of the coaches are like, "Now nah, we got our own way to do it. We're way smarter. It's like, what are you talking about? How no. did you miss this? But no. anyways, I'm glad they got it rectified. The last thing I want to talk about before we get into the Dolphins, AG, right, right. is uh, Robert Tunyon has, he's in my, you know, he is a guy that uh, I he's just think house. he's growing. No, he's honestly. No, I, we he's growing out of the growing. doghouse now. Yeah, he's growing and growing. He's, he's trying to become a five-tool player. And I just, correct. I, I really, um I love to see it. Honestly, I love to see a guy develop. You know, we're, right, we're right. on this show. We analyze, man. We don't like yeah. or dislike. Correct. We just talk about what's happening, right? And this guy yep. is really trying to get better, but he's not catching a lot of passes. And for a while, he was catching a lot of that stuff when he was kind of chipping out. Mm-hmm. He's getting out late. He's getting those checkdowns. But we haven't seen a lot of downfield plays. We haven't seen a lot of action from him. The team that we're about to play just gave up. Um, I think Knox was their leading. Uh, their led the, the Bills last week against the Dolphins in receptions and yards. I think he had six for 86 um, right. and a touchdown. So you start thinking like, man, would, is this the week that maybe we get a little more Robert Tunyon? Maybe. There's they a play a lot of man. It's it, the ma- I'm just telling you right now, I've watched right. a ton of Miami film. The matchup is there. Are they going to use it? Like, are they going to chip him out every play because they have those elite pass rushers on the edge? Or are we going to put him out there in the slot? Are they going to match the, you know, are they going to match nickel? Are they going to match base? If we keep mm-hmm. him Mercedes in, are we going to give him the opportunity to win? Because I, I think, I don't think you can run an offense in the National Football League at an, at an elite level if you don't have a masterful tight end. And like, if you I want mean, him to be that guy, dude, you got to dial his number up a little bit more, man. He's doing everything you want now. He's at the point of attack. There it He'll is. Play the backside blocks. He's, I mean, he's putting, it's like, for me, for a tight end, if you put in the work, dude, I'll throw you as many passes as you want. You 100%. know what I mean? If yep. you're willing to grind for for the running back and the offensive line, then, dude, whatever. Hey, I'm going to get you the balls. I want you to be the – because to me, you're the most valuable player on the team, I'll be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I mean, not literally, but that's the – he's the guy. If you have a really good tight end, that offense ex- – you have so many more opportunities in offense if you have a great tight end. Yeah, it's a Swiss Army knife. When he could do certain things and everything – um, coming off the ball, and then he's blocking, and then able to get open, and, and then run after the catch. That is a problem. That creates another issue for any DC and defensive backs, linebackers matchup, especially when it's a speed problem um, that you had years ago with uh, Jimmy Graham when he first got you know going. But we we already know where he couldn't, where he was uh, his downfall, you know, his weaknesses. But when they have the full package like the Kittle, then that's a, that's a guy you want on the field, and you reward him by giving him everything, let him block, but then let him catch big plays, design plays for him down the field. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited to, to, to see that progression and see him develop this year. I know like, you know, everybody will go, oh, he's had a down year. And I, you mm-hmm. know, it's we No, actually do. We'd love it. I, I love how, I love that he's, he's gotten better at those things that I think are important to be in a complete tight end, like a five tool guy and, and Kittle and Andrews are kind of the standard right now in, in my mind, at least as far as tight ends go, like exactly. talking about Travis Kelsey and certainly, an incredible talent, but not necessarily yeah. traditional tight end of the tight end that we expect to see have in, in some of these offenses. And again, you go back and you look at like George Kittle mm-hmm. makes, we'll talk about this in the film stuff. Like George Kittle is the reason the San Francisco is incredible. Yes. They have all mm-hmm. these other guys. If you don't have George Kittle, there's just things you can't do. Right. 
Yep. It just, I mean, it just plays that don't can't work as well. Right. It can't, it can't work as well. And so it, it'll, it, it'll be interesting to see. I hope, I hope they get it. I hope they get loose or get him loose against this defense because the, the defense that's coming up against the Dolphins, they're pretty mm. good. Mm-hmm. They're pretty good against the run. They give up a lot of points, but they've been in a lot of high scoring games. They have, um, it's a base three, four defense, but listen, the, the big news here is I think number one, um, Xavier Howard's a real deal. I, I know since he was, a, I think, second round pick out of Baylor, he, he, he can ball and he's a ball hawk. Like, he yeah. will go if, if you throw, he's like <laughs> Jay Alexander. If you throw at him, he's gonna get he'll, he'll get himself a pick. Yes, he's just he got that nose for the ball. He's he's very, very special that way. They have three elite pass rushers, yes, they do. <laughs> they have Mel, Melvin Ingram, six sacks, seven tackles for loss. Bradley Chubb only has two and a half and one, but he's a, I'm he just, just got you, there. Bro. Yeah, he just got there. He's an and he's an elite guy. He's an elite guy. He played well for the Broncos. Yeah. He was hurt last year. Yep. He's an elite level guy. They got this kid Jalen Phillips, who's a, a, the a first round pick last year. He's a Dude, problem. He is a problem. He's got seven sacks, seven tackles for loss. And when they bring all three of those dudes in, in other words, if you get down or if mm-hmm. they have any inclination that you're <clears> going to throw the ball, then they have Christian Wilkins, who's a a, a, an elite level defensive tackle in this league. If you, if they have any inclination that you're going to throw the ball and they get mm-hmm. all three of those dudes in the, in the game at the same time, buckle <clears> up. Yeah. It is a, it is a severe problem because they'll put Jalen Phillips down against that guard. And yeah. Oh my goodness. That, I mean, I'm just telling you guys, he is, he is really, really good. And Melvin Ingram for me has been the best pass rusher yep. that no one talks about. For the last seven years. And he's been in different places and they're able to yes. bring that energy and that gameplay to different teams. So no matter basically he's plug and play. We get to oh, we get yes. you in chargers. Okay. Plug you in right here. Here you go. Uh he came from the Chiefs. Plug you in right here. There you go. And now he's with another uh, get a team on the rise. Plug you in with the Dolphins defense. There you go. So it's just when you have players like that, they understand their role, even though he's a high tier player. When you have a player on that level that understands their role, but then is also can be a starter for perennial years on a team, that's special because a lot of people don't want to, you know, a lot of players don't want to give in to being a role player. But sometimes you, you if you understand that and make it your way, then he's done that. Melvin Gordon, Melvin Ingram does that, done a great job of doing that, going from team to team. There's there's guys <laughs> like when you play offensive line, there's kind of there's kind of two guys that you worry about, right? And the first mm-hmm. one is the guy that just keeps coming. Yep. Every single play, man. He's motor, like, high motor. It, 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 you, you start naming off a lot of guys that you see. That Hutchinson kid, Aiden Hutchinson up in Detroit, that's yep. that's who he he's is. He just yeah, keeps coming, right? Yeah, that's he, there's no plays off. Patrick Kearney was like that. There's a handful of guys in the league like that. Um, and then there's the guys like Melvin Ingram who just have this – their bodies just move better than everybody else's. He's just got these weird kind of – He's a little bit off like the traditional rhythm. He can yep. kind of lull you to sleep. He'll go slow and then all of a sudden go fast, change the pace, change the direction. Has very, very unique skill set as far as hand moves and, and body feints. And, and he has a weird build. He has a weird beard build too for yes. rushing the passer. He's not your typical size in terms of height and weight. And then he just has that. It's just for most offensive tackles, offensive guards, when he comes in, it's like, okay, I'm a what I'm going to do with this guy, you know, what I'm, how I'm going to stop him. He's a, uh, what is the, so the first guy you're aware of and you respect yep. the second guy, you're a little bit afraid of the Melvin, you're a little bit afraid because you have no idea what he's going to do from play to play. You just have no idea what you're going to see. Mm-hmm. So let's check out a couple of these, a uh, couple of these films and, and, and AG, let's start with this. The key to having success against these guys, this 94 Wilkins is, is a great player. He is an app, but if but he's not <clears throat> he's you know no, he 305. If you can get really? underneath his pads and you got a you know, you got a we got a good tight end here. We got two good tight ends here that can get on Jalen Phillips and, and make blocks, you can make hay in this running game. And I think the big thing you gotta you know, you gotta always remember is a lot of the teams They're are running fine. are running similar stuff offensively. It's just who's running it better. Yeah. You know, and, and like the San Francisco 49ers obviously have it. Yeah, this is yeah, to, to run a ball uh, or to try to stop the ball with a, the 49ers line, even though you got a bare front, it's going to be work. It's going to be hard to do, hard to stop. So this is 22 <laughs> personnel. You can see the use checks over here on the right, mm-hmm. hipped off against, so they got a, you know tight ends uh, on each tackle and they got hipped off. But it's just little things that you have to be able to take advantage of. They These guys have a handful of role players. 
in, um, and then and then some superstars, right? I think mm-hmm. Jerome Baker to me, their middle linebackers is, is is a budding superstar in this league. Zach Sealer right here is who Trent Williams is going up against is one of their role playing defensive tackles that that needs to hold his gap. And if you can take care of these backside plays like he does and drops them, you just see mm-hmm. this, you know, get oh. everybody going the same way. This is something that the Green Bay Packers are capable of doing. It is. Can we that- run everybody by and cut off on the backside? Like this is the this is the kind of stuff you see, and you go, all right. We have the ability that's, to do this just as well as everybody else. That's, that's Aaron stealing. Jones right there. That's, that's stealing. Aaron Jones right there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's stealing. I mean, when you get holes like that, where the co- cutback on that on McCaffrey's third step, the cutback, you can see the lane. And you, and it's actually a two-way goal. He took the best one, though, and uh, get downfield, and then he's a problem. You know, So right here, like I said, third step, one, two, three, boom. There's that cut he's made. You can see where it is. If you're reading um, blockers, where your blocker's taking the guy he's blocking, you know, 64, 65, got their guy going. Like I said, that one r- r- block to the left or uh, to the right, you can't take that, but you're not going to get much yard. But he sees the big gap, as you should see, and the tight end coming over the top for any garbage left there. And then having that D lineman on the ground, too, that's just get your legs up and run past him. So with having that right there, that's like, oh, my God, I'm about to go eat. You know, I'm going to bust my head on the, um, touch the on the field, field goal, like EB used to say. So <laughs> That guy's good, man. Yeah. That guy is really good. good. Really good coach. So, Chubb, you see the like stand up defensive ends. They got Baker out here on the other side uh, right now. But there's a number of things, and I think one of the, I think one of the the things that we can do against this team is is attack their cornerbacks. Listen, I, I I've been down there. I <clears throat> I know a lot of the guys on this team. Mm-hmm. They are not thrilled about tackling on the edges. Now they're middle guys. Baker, fifty two from New England. They, they mm-hmm. will tackle. They are players. Uh, Roberts, but edges, they are not willing participants in the contact game. Hmm. So you have to find a way to get guys like Chubb, out, you know, walled off so you can get out here. When you get out here, you just have opportunities. You see, yeah. you can see that age. You can see him coming down like, bro, 27. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm Come just on, telling man. you, it, it, it's, it pops yeah. up on tape. And that's it's, Eckler. And that's Eckler, okay? That's no business decisions there, okay? Yeah. He, he he the same size as Eckler. And so yeah. that just shows you sometimes DB's mindset when they're going into a tackle and they see the speed of the runner running at them. He's like, oh, let me let me just get out of the way. <laughs> I just, I'm forcing him back inside, Coach. Yeah, coach, I'm, just, I'm, just yeah I'm, I'm holding my leverage here. I just forced him back leverage. inside. Yeah. yeah. Oh, goodness gracious, man. Just shake your head. So we got the, we got the game that everybody's running right now. We're just going to pull the center and the backside tight end, right? This is just the old stutter play that we used to run, bro. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're going to they're going to get Ingram and, and Jerome Baker. Got the tackle blocking down from, on, on our right of our screen, coming down on fifty-two. Kick out, yeah, we go same foot, same shoulder. Good so shot. this is good what shot. I was talking Ingram. about. Yeah, you see how Ingram does a good job going same yep. foot, same shoulder, and he leaves yep. that outside aren't open. This is what I'm talking about. I don't understand why everybody doesn't play play football this way. He he effectively shuts that guy. He's not going to be able to run his feet and move him out of the way as, as fast. And see what I mean? Does, yeah, I see what you mean. And then right there, Eckler only has a one way go, and fifty five is in his face. And yep. so that's defensively, that's photo, that's photo perfect, picture perfect right there to stop it, slow it down. You know, we know Eckler could probably pick up a few yards if he breaks the tackle, but from initial uh, first three steps, that's what you want from a defensive side dealing with the stutter and dealing with guards pulling and tight ends pulling. So that tight end actually ends up getting Baker, and he and we talked about this yesterday. Yep. He takes it out the backside, right? He takes it inside the guard. I know we mm-hmm. were talking about going to the backside of the tackle, but he takes yeah. us inside the guard. And Eckler's that kind of runner, right? We can make this happen. They do a good job of governing it up for, mo- for the most part, though. Yeah, exactly. So they did their best job there to slow that down. Just Eckler, you know, had was able to squeak through and get a few extra yards with his, with his leg drive. Hey, listen, it's hard to find explosive plays in the run game against these guys that aren't just like quarterback scrambles or kind of busted plays because Mm -hmm. they actually do a really good job. I think they give up, uh, you know, they give up four, almost four and a half yards of carry. But, you know, really, I think that's a yeah, yeah, it's you got to remember they're up so much that a lot of times you guys are playing six in the box, five in the box, nickel stuff for some of these teams. And, you you know, you're going to give up yards. You're going to give up big plays if you're going to have six players in the box On, on this Josh Allen's. This is. We talk about the, all these different RPOs, right? And right. some of these RPOs are based on where the linebacker. So a lot of times you do it on the guy on the, line, the end of the line of scrimmage. But right now, Josh Allen's actually reading the linebacker I have highlighted. Right. And you'll see he just stands. He stands and watches. If he doesn't stand, see this space vacated behind him, 
they're gonna they're gonna throw a slant or something, but he stands and holds. Yeah. So we get out. So we don't we have those opportunities. Aaron likes to do a lot of that stuff pre-snap, but we do have those opportunities to run those kind of plays against this team. Yeah, we'll just, just see. Get, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say just a real quick comment. Just we'll just see how much the linebackers trust because they know Josh Allen's gonna run or throw, mm -hmm. but they know Aaron's is gonna throw. You know, he's not exactly a big so that's it's just where the linebackers bite on that, you know, and trust it just as much as they did with Josh Allen in the backfield. So that'll be just a little difference there. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we've been we've been kind of having success on that with the under center, yeah. quick fake, pop to the backside, <clears throat> hit the backside slant. Same, it's the same action, it's the same, it's the same opportunity, right? You're just guaranteeing yep. that, that guy's gonna gonna go. So now we got some under center play action pass versus these guys. You see the box and 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 Listen, fast flow linebackers. This is an very athletic. Fast. This is an athletic box seven. A very, very athletic box seven. Jerome Baker is elite level speed for the linebacker Van, position. Van will get sucked up. Solid player. There, he's a hustle player. Van Ginkle, not real big, but he makes plays. You see this. We get those linebackers sucked up. We got outside leverage because they got single safety. They're forcing to the middle. Safety's pretty far back though, so you have a ton of space from the fifty to the backside forty here. For this receiver to work <clears throat> this is yeah. stuff and we see this play with our team you know with with the packers all the time so opportunities like this are available i think i have another one back to back here on the other side i do on the other side under center play action pass outside leverage single safety look they want to stack the box to take away the run that's their mo they want to play man-to-man -man coverage on the outside right they're very comfortable playing xavier and howard i, mm -hmm. I know they one of their guys is hurt we might see justin bethel we might see no out there but you have um, opportunities to win one-on-one -on -one matchups against this team because they want to shut down the run early. They want you to go. They have, they're not afraid to go single safety. They're very comfortable playing man coverage or match coverage with their with their defensive backs. And mm -hmm. then later on, they want to pin their ears back and get those guys going. Yep, because they got that dynamic front, like you said, defensive front with Chubb and uh, what's his name, Julio uh, Phillips. I mean, Phillips, very, yeah. very, very, very athletic. I mean, to see the way they're built. Just watching the eye, just looking at the eye test of it, you know they could do some things dynamically. That's why they're sometimes in the ground with their hand, or sometimes that's why they're standing up. You just see this under center, what it does. And it's so funny in the National Football League because they're so good at using space. Like 42 here just takes that little step. That's it. That's that's, that's all it takes. That's yeah. the difference between success and failure at the highest level. That's literally yeah. it, it's crazy, but that's all it is, man. You take that step, yep. You're out, you're out of your window. Mm-hmm. So they got that because, like I said, establish the run, you know, in terms of the Packers coming into this game. So you get those effects when you do it, when you get back to your play action. I <clears> saw <throat> this play and we got a single safety look again. We got trips down to the right. You really got quad down to the right if you're, if you're going to count the running back, which the defense will. You got a, sing, you got a single receiver mm -hmm. to the, the top of the field. And you just think you put Christian Watson up here and they will play Christian Watson versus Xavier and Howard man on man. They're not, I'm just telling you they're not afraid, right? So yeah. you see these kind of opportunities here. Where they, they're gonna they're gonna run that deep. You kind of go through the zone and then you pop back out the other side. Aaron Rodgers has all kinds of arm strength and just that's Mike Williams again for the Chargers. But you let it fly, right? And these mm -hmm. these are the plays that they're willing to give up because they think their pass rush is gonna get there. They think they can hold up on the outside. Yeah. So they just gotta make sure. <clears throat> I say um, Packers offensive line just make sure your, your techniques there, footing. I know Josh Nyman had a tough game last week, but still. Uh, was able overall to have a decent, I say, game out there. So now he's going to be tested. And, and weather, you know, like I said, may be a factor for the bigger guys. Being, it, it, I think it's now back up to about predict, uh, predicting around 65, maybe 70 degrees. So that, that could be, you know, something to be aware of, you know, coming in as a player, get hydrated, be ready mentally to play in that weather. I think they'd be lucky if it was 70 degrees. I mean, right. I think, you, know, you know what I'm saying? I think it yeah. would be a 90. I think that would be, be yeah. unfortunate. But it'd be, um, very it'd be unfortunate. 90. So we're, we talk about these elite level pass rushers, and, and the one thing they want to do, I'm highlighting Jalen Phillips, here, they want to get to the ball, right? They want oh. to get the number. They know that sacks, the sacks equal millions of dollars, right? <laughs> that too. Gotta, so, and, and, but this guy, I'm just telling you, this guy's frantic, right? So he's going after, he's going after the running back. He knows he can chase this down on the backside. He knows they have nobody to block him on the backside if they if they hand this ball off. And then again, it's just like simple stuff, man. Like keep keep passes all the, i mean we have receivers you know that's their tight end gear but or everett but we have receivers tight ends that can make these same kind of blocks you got to be willing to stand in here and take a hit mm -hmm. justin herbert takes <clears> and you gotta finish off yeah but but gosh man like 
it's there because sometimes when you have a real fast team that likes to likes to pursue, mm -hmm. sometimes you got to take advantage of that. You do. You know, they're hungry to make the tackle stop the play right away. So make sure you got that full effort too when you uh, when they uh, actually make the mistake of taking too many steps. One thing that's always interesting is different personnel groupings, right? So if you're going to go in and you're going to play your base three four, and Jalen Phillips is going to be your outside backer, and all of a sudden you go into a formation that drags him out to the slot. Like this is the, these are the advantageous formations that if I'm a green Bay Packers offensive coordinator, I'm trying to figure out how to get this guy, number 15, Jalen Phillips in the slot off mm -hmm. the ball, not rushing. And he moves great, but he doesn't move like a defensive back, like a safety. Right. And now you're going to give yourself opportunities because you got to play a little bit softer He's, you know, there's just a lot to think about out here. And all of a sudden you have open zones, right? Because you know, he's going to be playing zone. So you already know what the coverage is going to look like. You know what your routes are. You just have opportunities here for him to make the wrong decision. We can run option routes off of him all, all day long. You just have to know how to get him into that formation. Yep. Get him into that formation, you know, where you are, you know, establishing the run first and then make sure everybody's executing, executing properly and running the proper routes that you can get there. <clears throat> I think we have a couple more things here. I just thought this was like, I mean, you see what they're doing as far as I mean, back nasty. Up. That's nasty. You I got mean, an out breaking round and an in breaking round underneath that. I mean, Josh Allen <laughs> throwing a time, dude. And, and, and then like the, the throw, the, correct. Then the, the throw corner has precise. no chance here. I mean, this is insane. This is yeah, an insane. Throw. This, this is cover. This guy, you got two deep safeties and you got two routes in unison, one going over top, one breaking underneath it. Um, and so it puts a the, that deep corner or deep safety in a dilemma there who I'm going to take because if I take one I'm, I'm losing either way basically so I, the reason I act the, everything you said is is spot on the reason I put this in though is is because after the catch I just want to just you know let's appreciate that he doesn't want to tackle <laughs> yeah I, I, and I only bring that up because it's not it doesn't happen just there it happens also uh on the line of scrimmage like you can run those kick plays, you can run anything out to oh, the outside. Like they're just not, they're not about that life. Oh yeah. But, yeah. So the only person he tackled is his own player here. Exactly. Exactly. So that'll be check on my mental mindset, telling my tight ends, telling my running backs, you know, Packers running backs, tight ends, look what you can do after the catch. You know, you got a full head of steam, Aaron Jones. Um, if AJ Dillon plays, they don't want to tackle. Just saying, I mean, look at this, you know, this team, this tight end, they, let run for another 15, 20 yards after the catch. So be aware of that. That's, and then once you make it like mental, you put that on mental frontal lobe as a coach, because I know EB, he used to do this one little trick with us where he said, hey, AG, uh, Tony, Najee, if you're in and it's a passive situation, just tap Brett and say, hey, man, I'm going to be on the left side over here, check down. Or I'm going to be on the right side, swinging out. Just throw last that in his brain. That's smart. Yeah, last exactly. thing he hears. Last thing he hears because that's the first thing that's going to pop in his brain. As soon as he looks at, oh, Donald's not open, Javon, Javon's not open, Bubba's not open. Oh, there's a mine right there. Boom. So good, good I would have there. imagined Brett would have been like, yeah, that's great, man. I'm going yard. <laughs> <laughs> he probably, <laughs> that's where he wants to go all the time. Don't want hey, him. offensively, <laughs> these guys are good. They're they're ninth in the league right now, 25 points, for, just under 25 points per game. They make 370 yards a game. Um, one thing that's interesting, and you see it in the last couple of weeks, they don't run they they run the ball less than 40% of the time. And mm. what you find when you watch this when you break down some tape on these guys is like last week's a great example. They got into situations where they're running really well, but it's like you can't get away from the pass because all the like you put a lot of money into the you know into the wide receiver room. You obviously have this budding quarterback in Tua Tagovailoa that you you want to be this MVP can MVP candidate. That's that's kind of the sexy part of the offense. That's not the mm -hmm. dirty work stuff of the offense. Mm -hmm. Two is having a good year, 243 to 375, 65% completion percentage, a little over 3,200 yards, 24 touchdowns, five interceptions, but he's been that's sacked it. 19 times, right? So right. this is one of those deals where sometimes they get away from what they're doing really well in the moment. And this is an opportunity. Again, the only really way to stop this offense is to make sure that Tua can't get the ball off to Tyree Kill. Because he is the offense. 100%. We saw that three weeks ago. That's why they've been on this losing streak where teams have figured out, which I don't know why it took this long <laughs> to figure out what you got. It was just, or they were planning to, you know, say, oh, well, he's going to go to Tyreek, but there's these other players. There's, there's Waddle, you know, Jaseki. But it's like, okay, you got the fastest guy in the NFL. Let's focus there first and then let's, then let's tell it down from there. Let's see if he, we take him away what he's going to do with the ball. 
You know, if he's going to go to Jacecki, he's going to go to Waddle. He's going to do the other receivers underneath running back, stuff like that. Let's see that first before you just let Tyreek run around, run loose in the defensive backfield. I'm like, mm, interesting. This this interesting when you see it. Tyreek Hill has over, he has 1,529 yards right now with three games to go. Exactly. He could, he, he'd be a 2,000 yard guy. Him that's, and Justin Jefferson goal. could be two, two 2,000 yards guys. Crazy. Seven touchdowns. Waddle's, Waddle's got 1,100 yards and seven touchdowns. Mostert, I mean, most of that seven, almost eight hundred yards rushing. He's gonna have yeah, a G I on mean, the ground, and, and he's run. He runs a four. Th- I mean, you're just yeah. I mean, he's four three all day. For speed. Jeffrey four, Wilson's three. fast. Jeffrey Wilson's got you know four and a half yard uh, uh, yard per carry three. average. Yeah. And what keeps like when you watch this tape, honestly, what sticks out is Tua can throw. He, I mean, Tua doesn't have a strong arm, but he can throw on time. Exactly. He's got great anticipation. This offense is just fantastic at using grass right it just uses space really well but what just stands out man is like there's you know play, you're playing you're playing you're playing all of a sudden uh-huh. deep ball to tyree kill deep ball to Jalen waddle deep that deep post that they keep running the uh, uh, you know the, in the, from the slot they just run across right. the safety's face and just take off Correct. i mean it just every game without or oh you're gonna match us up one-on-one you're not even gonna get hands on us, man. We're gonna run yeah. right by you, stack you. Oh, if you underthrow it, I'll just jump up, and make the play. You attack me right there. If you throw it on time, gone because nobody can catch me. I mean, it's yeah. it's it's like you said, cheat code is the best way to use it, man. Because like yes. if if he throws anything in that vicinity, usually there's not even anybody on the screen before he has to slow down. Yeah, like he underthrows so many passes, but it doesn't even matter. Now he throws the short stuff on time, the medium stuff on time. He does a great job of anticipating. What you're seeing, though, is like these receivers are unique. The speed from the running back position is unique, and it is a problem unless they take themselves out of the game by forcing too much onto his plate. Exactly. It's something where, you know, you got those, you got that speed, but you got to realize what they want to do. They want to go to Kyrie. They want to go to Waddle. You know what? Let's uh, extend the field. Let's make sure we have the coverage in place to take away those two options to make them. Let's see how good he is and go in his progression. You know, make him get to Jackie, make him get to Mozart coming out the backfield. Let him get to those tight ends and third receivers. Let's see how – because we already know where he's going. And that's what other teams done previously uh, before this game. You know, it's funny. Uh, well, the first thing we're going to talk about really when we talk about their offense is, you know, Mike McDaniel comes from the Shanahan offense. And the Shanahan mm-hmm. offense is I, – I, 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 I want to say it's predicated on having a badass tight end. I mean, yeah. you think about George Kittle – Right. And the things you think about, I mean, I think Shanahan, oh, was he back there with Tony Gonzalez in Atlanta? Uh, yes. Yes. Right. 100%. When yep. you start thinking about Shannon Sharp with his dad <clears throat> in Denver, mm-hmm. like you start thinking about what did the, those, those guys could do it all. And they, and George Kittle is the biggest badass tight end on the planet. Yes, right. They he do right. not have that guy. Mike Giusecki is actually having a down, like he's not catching any passes this year because he's not even in the game because he is not a willing blocker. Like he is not a fan of contact. I, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I was there when he got drafted. Nice kid, volleyball player, not a fan of contact, right? Not going to block mm-hmm. for you. Okay. Dalton Smythe, Notre Dame kid, number 81. He is, but he, like th- this is not George Kittle, but they ask him to do George Kittle things. They ask Correct. him to block one-on-one and pass protection. They ask him to come back on, on the, on the, um, on the cross zone looks, they ask right. him to be a lead blocker. And it's just like, well, it's tough, man. Like you have, if you're not that guy, it's not any fault of his own, but if you don't have a George Kittle and you're asking the tight end to do stuff like this, like you're going to get walked. Like, that's a problem. You want to get two of in trouble. Yeah. Have his tight end get walked back by the defensive tackle. There you go. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it, it's not that hard. You know, uh, you, you want to shut down the run game. Like it's, it's, it's not that hard, man. You take, you take that backside tight end and you see Kyle Van Noy just come and see him right in the backfield here. Nope. Problems. Mm-mm. Right? Yep. Like this stuff is not, this isn't rocket science. It's like this is a specific position that you need to be ultra, <clears throat> ultra physical with in order to defeat this team. Right? Yep. If he's yep. hipped off and you think he's going backside, take go. I'm going to knock his block off. I'm going to make that running back cut in the backfield. You've talked about at length how, how difficult that is. Penetration, right? it destroys any run play unless you got Barry Sanders. That's about it. And nobody <laughs> has Barry Sanders right now. So Mozart can't, does have quick feet, but he's uh, he has a two-step, you know, kind of a jump step he does, and then he gets going. But if you make him do that every time, 
that's going to you know give the Packers better chance to winning because then run game is not quite on track and then pass game will be off track because the run game is not there. Yes, sir. Good gracious. Had him. Had the guys reason, open. Yeah, every, almost every one of these guys is open. Unfortunately, and the reason I show this is it's like these guys, speed kills, right? Like speed kills. But quarterbacks back here getting beat up by this guard and tackle, not playing it. You know, this this guy's going to the Pro Bowl, man. And I, I'm Armstead just got came in a huge free agent deal. He was with the Saints with Drew Brees for years. Mm -hmm. He's had some injuries. Oh, yeah, I remember, I remember he's, him. He's, he's, yeah. he's going to the Pro Bowl. I would be, I'm just telling you, I would be shocked if Preston Smith doesn't have a big game. I'd be shocked. I just think that Preston, right now, with the way this guy pass sets, with his technique, with the way that they're playing right now, I would unless they just don't throw the ball, I would be shocked if Preston Smith doesn't have a game against this guy. Exactly. Especially with the games he's put out this year. The last three games, what Preston Smith does, we yeah, talked about it. He's been stopping the run and then doing what he loves to do, go after the quarterback and has the technique and it has the mental to get, you know, get it done. So this could be another in a row game, fourth game in a row where he's causing problems from his side of the ball. What what I like what I like about him that I think plays well here is you see Fox beating the the guard on this play. Right. So you see mm -hmm. Fox beating yep. the guard. The guard's you know, young player, but bro, watch watch what the, happens to the tackle. Oh yeah. I awesome. mean, this is you know Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, saw that. Get, you're getting dump truck. And when you talk about like well, it's, well, I think I got another one here. When you talk about what is Preston Smith just, in my opinion, really good at, he's good at using – he's not like a – he's got a couple swipes and a couple chop clubs, but what is he mm -hmm. really good at? He's really good at using leverage, arms. Leverage. And, and his, and his arm length. Yeah. Yes, and so he's but getting under the pads and just actually moving humans in the pass rush. And you see Kyle Van Noy here got his first sack on Armstead the same game. And look, wow. I mean, that's a bad position to be in, bro. Yeah, when you are, yeah, we talked about this on uh, on Monday on yeah. all fours as an offensive lineman looking at your quarterback or running back being hit in the backfield, you're gonna hear a lot on Monday when you watch this film. If, if I'm if I'm Preston Smith or I'm if I'm the D line coach, I'm rolling this over and over because I'm just telling you from a technique standpoint, this guy's had a great career, but if you get a good jump, he turns his shoulders immediately. You can come back inside whenever you want. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, it's, it's literally all you can eat. I, I, I've, I've always been, he's one of the few guys that, and he's had a great career and he's a, he's a phenomenal player. He's had a phenomenal career with Drew Brees and the saints. Yep. I've always been shocked that people don't beat him more just because of the way he sets. And I know he's, he ran like a four, six. I mean, he's a great athlete, but yeah, brings, there are opportunities there, man. Yeah. That brings you to, that brings me back to my point of when you have good players around you, it covers up things. So Drew Brees, what, how long did he hold the ball in the pocket? Yeah, that's, that's, I didn't want, you know? I didn't want to say it, but I'm glad you did. I didn't yeah. want to say it, but I'm glad you did. Cause that's right. how I feel about it. Yeah. You know, so I'm just saying. That, All right. So we talked about it. The chargers did a great job. So Tyreek Hill's on the, you know, he's the inside of this slot. Look on the, on the trip side. That's scary. All we, well, yeah, it's, it's frightening. Cause he's got free acts right now. He thinks he has free access to the safety. If you look at if you look yeah, at if you see it, yeah, if you see it, yeah, because the linebackers looking in the guy is that Ingram or that's who is that? Oh no, this is so this is Van Noy over here, and Van Noy's gonna take a shot, bang, and get oh, him you off, mean the, off spot. the ball. Yeah, off yeah, the spot. Yeah, yeah, but, I'll, I'll yeah. talk about the guy that was set around the 40, uh no, the 30, yeah, yeah, that's sitting right there on the 40, or what's that? So that's just that's just your nickel corner. 39. Oh, that's the nickel that's, corner. Okay. That's the nickel gotcha. corner matched up. And my yeah, point true. is if they if they don't bang him off here, oh, yeah, he's got free access to the safety. And so when you talked about, hey, or, uh, you know, you talk about what's, what are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to line up man to man and bump and run this guy? Or are you supposed to stand 10, 15 yards back and give him a full head of steam? It's I'm like, hit him. Yeah. Take hit him with, with somebody. You. Hit him with somebody else. This is the old Willie McGinnis Patriots saying, shout out to Willie McGinnis. Yeah. Hey, wow. Well, here we go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but Cal Van Noy, you know, you just go ahead and bang him off the line of scrimmage, disrupt right. the timing. And now what happens? Like you got early pressure has nothing over here and he's got to throw the ball away to actually gets a uh, intentional grounding call here. Yeah. And so it's just about being physical at the line of scrimmage and, being and smart. you might, and you might not like, but you can't, I don't think we can do it. And Jire might argue with me, but I don't think we can do it. All right, man, press man. Like if, if you say, if, if Rasul Douglas is playing press man versus Tyree kill with a single mm -hmm. safety look this weekend, mm -hmm. I'm just telling you we're in trouble. Yeah, right? It's just not help. a good matchup. 
You got to get them up. If they line up in that formation where he's closer to a DN or outside linebacker, they got to use this tape as as like, hey, you know what? We got to take that because it it keeps from, like you said, Tyree running straight down the field untouched, full speed, and that's not nothing you can stop. You're not going to catch up. Just just for fun, I I wonder because this dude, like, I don't care if you're a Packers fan, I don't care what fan, this dude's fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, you you look at so Tyree and Waddy, you look at this, it's like, okay, I'm not having a good game. I'm getting pressed. I got, we'll just go. Oh, I know this play now. I know trips left. Yeah, let's just go trips left. Oh, you guys, you're going to rotate the safety away from me? Oh, okay. Well, bye bye. I mean, it's literally Roadrunner stuff, dude. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know what's nuts here, like AG. Uh, I think I, I might show it on one of these, but when he runs, like he he, so what is he? Five foot six, five foot Something eight. Something like that. He's like five he's, eight. I give him five tiny, eight. Right? Yeah, I give him let's five give, eight. Let's give him five, shit. Give him five ten. <laughs> when he runs, when he takes two strides, he covers six yards. Yeah. I mean, he's you probably four one. You want to talk about explosive, bro? Yeah. I mean, I know, I know you know, but I don't know. I mean, yeah. I'm just he's I'm four. Just he's here. he's legit four one the way he runs. I can see it. So you see, <clears throat> you see right here. Uh, let me back this up. So, so Tua can corner, yeah. Tua can ID, right? Smart player throws a great anticipation. Knows before the snap what's available. Mm-hmm. Safety's down. Man comes out. He knows that he knows that this safety has to. He knows that the safety on the hash has to rotate to the middle of the field by the look. He knows he's going to have man on man in the inside slot here. And he knows that that's a lot of big problem for anybody trying to guard his boys. Yeah, speed everywhere. And I said that's another thing that uh, Mike McDaniels took from Shanahan is in certain or certain personnel bookings. You know, when you call out there on the field that the coaches do, it's a speed problem. And I'm, I'm paying attention to that to more Kyle than his dad. Kyle Shanahan is creating speed per issue. Now he has what he has in San Francisco, and that's what McDaniels is doing here with Waddle, Hill, and Mozart coming off the backfield. So, yeah, Mozart, one of the things I love that these guys do is instead of running under center play action pass all the time, they'll go mm-hmm. with Tua. They'll take shotgun, and then watch how he, he turns around to fake handoff here. So he still turns his back to the defense. I love. I just love this because it's it's a full it's a it's a commitment yep. now to that defensive line, right? You've turned your back. It's a commitment, so it helps pass protection. And you see, like Matt. So Matt Milano got robbed. You want to talk about guys that got robbed from the Pro Bowl? Yeah, Matt yeah. Milano got robbed. Actually, both these Tremaine Edwards got robbed too. They both got Oof. robbed. You can yeah. Hit, right. These guys are ballers. ballers. Absolute ballers. But he most start in space. If you're gonna That's give this problem. dude ten yards, like you got real. <laughs> problems yeah like i said there was that two-step jump jump cut that i talked about that he does that i like and he's able to get to from zero to uh, 60 real fast so when he catches this ball you know this is where he creates problems for i mean look at this dude if i listen ag i'm taking that every day Uh, every day if i if i sit out there okay let's just say that they said mike you got to play one snap at at linebacker and you, here's your responsibility and i see this okay right. I'm, I'm just telling you right now I'm running full speed, okay. I'm tracking the near hip, but I ain't slowing down, bro. Right. I'm not. I'm like D cell, and I like I teach it, but I'm just telling you right now because there is no way on God's green earth that any <laughs> level of technique or athletic ability is going to allow me to tackle this man unless I just get really, really lucky. Okay. Correct. And you see this dude right here. It's like, boy. I mean. <laughs> Like Milano just is like, what happened? Like, he, just, he, he just he just hit he, it with the matrix, bro. Right. He just watched him just float past him, and he picked up a quick twenty yards. Most of fast. Now here we got Jaden. So hey, you, you want to cover up Tyreek? Do something special? Okay. Well, we got another guy. He's pretty good too. A little stutter and go. Oh I mean, look out! Look at the separation right there. Look at that. So that's this three, is what we're talking steps. about. With, this is what we're talking about with Tua though. Like Tua underthrows this ball. It doesn't even matter because he's so wide open. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That's... Look at this. He's got to come back and pick. I mean, he's so what? They're so wide open sometimes. Man, he is down on the run. That's a touchdown. That is a tutty. I wonder if it's tough to throw a, a guy that's so much faster. They're, they're so much faster than everybody else. Like your, you know, perception of how hard you have to throw the ball just must be way off. It's a mental thing because I remember my rookie year in Seattle in the off season, going to in my second year when we found out Mike Homer was coming in and mm-hmm. John Kitna. 
he kept we were, we were practicing on our own doing routes and he had me run some goal routes mm-hmm. and he was just he said after the second one he threw he kept under throwing me he said man i'm in my own head he said because i know you're fast of mine i'm like how far can can you just go i said i'm gonna just i'll just run. i don't know i mean i'll catch up to the ball if it's overthrown but mm-hmm. Just throw it. I said, don't think about that. So sometimes quarterbacks get that in their head. You know, I remember that was just him like having fun. So in right. the real life time action, when you have it on the field, actual time, that's going to probably get in this sneak in a quarterback's head. Like, man, this kid, I don't know if I can outthrow him, you know. And what do you think you run right now? Oh, not nothing close. Um, maybe. No, but let's just let's say you train for a month. Can you run a, a four eight? Yes. 100%. That's what I was about to say. I ran a 4.8 two years ago. I got okay. tested with half a hamstring. <laughs> I got one and a half hamstring four eight, now. 4.8 four eight with, with less than full hamstring. <laughs> yes. I ran a 4.8 two years ago. My players wanted to test me out. Coach, can you run the 40? I'm like, ah, uh, let me warm up. And that was just no training. I've been working out on my own treadmill with stuff and lifting weights. And I ran, I bust out a 4.8. So speed kills. We talked about it. This yep. linebacker's got to read. Motion man comes across. You see they're worried about the backside kick out for the possible because what all these guys mm-hmm. a lot of do is just fake the tight end and go to the flat. So nine's got to sit here. He's letting everybody get washed down. And you're like, oh, my goodness, man. Look at the space. Look at the space. Mm-hmm. Is that Wilson? Yes. That was Wilson, right? So this is Jeffrey, this is, uh, Jeffrey Wilson, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's Wilson. He came from the 49ers. Well, I, t- t- I tell you what, the 49ers know how to draft speed. Yes, they do. It's not hard when you look for it. You know, just guys, sometimes coaches get scared of certain things about players that have speed. You know, it's interesting. Yeah, it's scary. It's scary. So yeah. This is what this is how this is speed again, man. It's it, so, so 21's first off on the end of the line of scrimmage matched up, and we go in motion here. Right. And so I remember everybody's got a gap. So he yeah. immediately jumps back in and realizes, oh, I've made a mistake. Now he can't insert because, you know, nine times out of 10, he can go make that play. You ain't making the play against Mostert. Mm-mm. And it's just not happening. It's just too fast. Like this is you you get that half a step of problems with these guys. And this is the issue. Like you have to be so disciplined with your eyes and your scheme, so comfortable in what you're doing. Otherwise, man, it's a it's a huge problem with these guys. Yeah. And that's what I say with linebackers uh tracking the triangle between the quarterback. It's hard to do it. It's different in shotgun, but it's still something there where you track the quarterback to the center, to the running back, where he, wherever he's at, left or right of the quarterback, and that play action. Track them. Don't let the don't let the poolers coming around, all that distract you. But by the kind of time you see where the ball is exchanged, then you could be in the right position where you don't get sucked in or, you know, out of the run play and, and get in the wrong gap. I just thought this was like – Oh, this yeah, is, this, yeah. This, this is, is like it. a you-got-to-be-joking moment here. So Tyreek's yeah. just hanging out. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, well. I mean, good. He's, look at, he's, look at he, him. He's I mean, slowing down right run. now. He yeah, was slowing down run. back on the 30. Yeah. He uh, was slowing that's... down back on the 30. He started decelerating then. He was already, all right, I got, I'm in the end zone. All right, I'm we got, we got Miami, got we got Miami by four or three and a half, depending on where you go. Yep. Christmas Day. Whew. Packers down there. In Miami, you just said it's going to be 70, 70 degrees of kickoff, something like that. So not too bad. No. What do you think? Well, and we're going to uh, keys of the game. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, let's talk so about it. So what I think, I say offense, I say defensively, well, I'll say overall, you come out to play the way you played last week. It wasn't perfect, but it was winnable. Mm-hmm. Come out, that's the mindset. You can stack that on top of another win. Defensively, Kenny Clark, get him going early again like he did last week. If it's something that he hasn't done personally on his own, then K- KC, get there, baby. If it's D lineman or D coach, defensive coach, scheming certain things and stunts and all that, almost photocopy of what happened last week. Um, and then also, like I mentioned earlier, defense needs to meet, make Tua get the, his third and fourth progression to see how good of a quarterback he really is. He's still young. He has a lot to learn. He's leading with a ton of yards. He didn't get rewarded with the Pro Bowl because of, as players, we know there's more to just, okay, when you have two fast receivers, what you're going to do. Now you have a tight end. You have a running back you may have to run, throw the ball to. So make him go to those other progressions to see if he could really beat you. And then um, I'll say offensively right now, again, mistakes down, uh, run the ball, get that play actually going. So nothing nothing changes for me there in that, in that category. 
to your point, Robert Hunt was a, a second round draft pick in 2022. He's a good player. Uh, you look at uh, Connor Williams and Robert Jones. Those players are not at Kenny Clark's level. Kenny Clark should dominate the, in the interior of, of this team. There's no question about it in my mind. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I absolutely agree with you. I, I think, and I honestly think Preston Smith will have a good game. I hope they might just line him up mm -hmm. on the right tackle all day. But you know, I think if you line him up on Arnstead or not, he's gonna have he's gonna have a good game. He's just playing at a high level. My my key to the defense, Packers, you got to make him go eighty, man. We can't, you just can't give up Easy. that deep crossing route. You can't give up the go route for the touchdown. It happened. It seems like it happens at least once a game with these guys. Depending on the game, it could happen two, three, four times. Right. But you just cannot give up the free stuff where they feel that momentum. The the, the sirens are going off down there. They're celebrating in the stands. You cannot let these guys get free money. Like you have to make them go 80. Yes. Packers offense we talked about it. Force their cornerbacks to make tackles. That yep. means run the football. That means have the mindset that I'm catching these passes with the mm -hmm. intention to run after the catch <clears> run through tackles. We need to extend drives as long as possible. We need to extend drives and end up with points. You're going to do that by taking advantage of the one thing that they really do not like to do, tackling on the edge. And then the biggest thing is, you know, if, if I'm Matt LaFleur in this game, we can talk about Mike McDaniel's scheme versus Matt LaFleur schemes. Mm -hmm. We can talk about our defensive stuff. You have a handful of plays as an individual player every game where it's yes. like, I need to win this matchup right now in this moment. Yep. If I'm playing against Tyree Kill and we're going single safety, I'm on the backside of the trips. Look, I have to win. I can't give I, I can't give up the big play. Nope. If I'm going against Jalen Phillips at left guard, he lines up against me on third and eight. I got to do my job and block the hell out of him. I have to win my individual matchups. This game is going to come down to do you win your individual matchup when your number's called? So I'll be interested That's to it. see if the Packers can do that. Plain AG, I'm not going to say they're going to win, though. What are you going to say? Um, I say it's going to be a tough. A tough go either way. That's what two I'm Fs. saying. Two Fs. Two, two Fs. <laughs> it's two Fs because uh, these guys have the ability to dominate a game. They're in their home stadium. That is a factor this time of year. Mm -hmm. um, I, there's, you cannot look, uh, look look away from that. And we've seen what Tua has done when he has time in the pocket. So knowing those things, take time away from Tua, make him go to his third, fourth progression, and then offensively we score points, we get the ball running, and help out Aaron in the past game. You know, that's the recipe for any of the past previous four games for the Dolphins where the guy, where the other team won, and that's happened. Use that to your advantage 100%, and that's why we watch film. But come on, guys, watch film. Let's go. I think that, uh, you know, it's interesting. I'm, I'm, we're sitting here talking through it, and I just think, you know, who's the one guy that can ruin ruin us on their defense? And, and actually, I think it's Christian Wilkins. I think it's their defensive tackle. He's just a, he's a special player, man, and he mm -hmm. he does a great job of of playing the two gap and he's slipping inside on on pass rush or slipping inside on the run game. He he gets a lot of plays that makes plays in the backfield. If he doesn't make the play, he makes the play that makes the play. Uh, right. So we got to contain him play. because if we want to be able to run the football and and keep their explosive offense off the field, then we got to make sure we take care of him each and every play. And then you know defensively, man, it it is it's a tall order, but. I see the Packers, if we can contain Christian Wilkins, sure. if we can create that short field with Keyshawn Nixon, you know, when, when, when they get a chance to kick the ball back to him, mm -hmm. I think we can score some points. And then it just turns into how do you deal with scoring points against a high-scoring offense? Can we, from a defensive standpoint, can we get the stops that we need? It's certainly exactly. possible, man. I would flip a coin on this game. I don't know I, I don't know how it's going to come out, to be honest with you, but I'd flip a coin on it. But it's going to mm -hmm. be fun to watch for sure. Definitely fun to watch. And I say even on the, one comment on um, make them go 80. Mm -hmm. I remember, even though this is a different platform um, from what I coached right in the last previous years, but year one of, of my esports coaching at Lakeland, I had a, a Madden champion and we played a team. He played against a team that used the Kansas City Chiefs Tyreek Hill back in 2020. And so what we did was I said, we're not going to get beat deep. Let's put everybody back. And let them let him let's see how good he is with his other receivers. So you got to do that. And then we did that the whole game. So we ended up going to best of five and winning that fifth game because eventually that guy got tired where he wanted to go deep so bad, where sometimes he would just throw it just to get an inner, you know, just to see what would happen. And we we're getting easy picks, we we're getting easy turnovers. And so creating that in real life now, going back to the real game, do that to 
Toa, Tua, Mike McDaniels. Make them want to go. They want to go deep so bad, but make it hard for them. Don't make it easy. Create a problem, either turnovers, incomplete passes, because then that'll give them that'll be an extra barrier for that coaching staff and Tua in that backfield trying to make plays happen when those plays are not there. AG, a couple of games tonight before we get out of here, man. We got Jacksonville yeah. uh, not, or over the weekend, but tonight we do yeah. have Jacksonville versus New York Jets. Jets by two and a half at home. Both teams still are in the playoff hunt. Who do you got here, bud? Man, I'm I'm liking what Dougie Fresh is doing with these, yeah, these, these young Jacks. So right now I'm going, even though they have uh, the Jets at two-point favorites, mm-hmm. I like the way Jaguars are playing on the road and home. You know, they playing great in go both places. And Trevor Lawrence play, is having a he's, he's starting to show it a little he's bit. He's he's having a, a I say a third quarter type year where it's probably better than a lot of quarterbacks in his, you know, first round, you know, second year and how he's progressed right now. But that just goes to show when you have a better, you know, the right type of coaching around you that it helps, you know, with the development of, of what he knows and what he's seeing and how he's playing as an NFL quarterback now. This is one versus two, you know, in the first, in the draft pick. So this would be, you yeah, know, sure. I don't know how many, I don't know how often that happens, but this would be a good matchup. It's um, happened a couple of times, you know, with Peyton and other quarterbacks over the years. So yeah. certainly, certainly, I think I'm going to take Jacksonville as well. Okay, we got Giants, Vikings, Giants, or Vikings at home by four and a half. Tough game. Tough game, but I, I feel I believe Vikings or realize what's at the end. You know, they already got the conference title now. Okay. As a professional, let's clean this up because we don't get this cleaned up and we're in the other dance. That means the playoff. We're not going to be in, the, in that dance very long. We're going to get booted out the uh, the gym, basically. So get get this game right. Win this one because then we, we're we correcting all the mistakes. And so I'll take uh, Minnesota here. Yeah, I'll take Minnesota, too. What do you got? Detroit. So this is a good. I think this will be a good this, game. Panthers are still in it. Detroit Panthers. 100%. Panthers at home. Detroit by two and a half. The Panthers have a chance to uh, listen. They do. They Tom do. Brady and Tampa Bay playing so bad. The Panthers can actually win the division still. So, <laughs> yeah, it takes me back to 2000. Uh, what was it? it might have been eight or nine or between 2008 Seahawks. and 2011. Seahawks, exactly. Yep. When uh, Marshawn did ran had this his big run, they call that the baby quake mm-hmm. that year. That everybody in the NFC West was not good. I think the Saint they played the Saints too, and now on that big run that he did, and so that year. That kind of feels like this game right here um, going before we get to the playoffs. And I, I like the Lions, though. Um, they're playing good football. Lions just have too much. I just they have too many weapons. I, I love Brian Birds in that defense. Too many weapons for me. Um, mm-hmm. Bengals, Patriots. We think the Bengals are going to win that, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I say, and what is the difference between the Bengals from last year's Super Bowl team uh-huh. to potential Super Bowl team this year? That defense is doing. A defensive a, line, especially. Is play, is really good. Yes. And 55, Wilson, he's a good player. They are playing out of their minds. And this is like problems for anybody in the AFC going to the playoffs, having to face them in the first round. I said to somebody else, I I would say that I would, I could make the argument that their defensive line is the best defensive line in football right now. I'll say that with, with Hubbard, Mm -hmm. uh, DJ reader, they they can be one of the best defensive lines of football, if not the best. I mean, they have uh, three of their guys are box office guys right now. Cause DJ reader is playing at an extremely high level run and pass. Um, Okay, we got Commander San Francisco. San Francisco by seven. I'm taking San Francisco. This Purdy kid looks pretty good. The Commanders, though, are still in it too. They're I mean, still it's, in it. They're like, feisty. And 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 Heineke is tough not to like. I like yes. the defensive line of the Commanders. I'm cool. really looking forward to the matchup between this running game and that defensive line. That running game, like they, to me, they just have too many weapons now. Yeah. But uh, it'll do. be it'll be fun to watch. Biggest game of the weekend, bud. Eagles, Cowboys. Cowboys are five and a half point favorites because Hertz is not expected to play. Exactly. Gardner Minshew is coming back with the stash. Dallas is at home. Big playoff implications. What do you think? Oh, man. <clears throat> I see why Vegas did this. It's the obvious. Yep. Um, the game has to still be played. I say if Minshew sticks to his coaching and not him being what he's come up to be because he's kind of got this little – folklore about him you know the stash and everything and he could play like this because he just got you know took it off the bench from you know this fight for you know came in he's you know, like from keanu another reeves in their replacements right it's, it's like, like it's like expectations are exactly so stick to coaching so whatever the game plan is mr Minchu, i love what you do but stick to the game plan and play football the way your coaches are telling you because he hasn't been on the field a whole lot that's the only way i'm saying that's the only reason i'm saying this he hasn't but been AG on the field had- a whole lot 
what do they do if you're the Philly offense and Jalen Hurts is your leading passer and your leading rusher? Mm-hmm. Is your offense? He's your offense. I mean, yeah. and and the and the system is. I'm not going to say they designed the system for him, but at this stage, that is his system. Nobody else runs yeah. it like he runs it. Exactly. What, what do you, what do you what do you do? Because now Gardner Minshew is not running like he runs it. I that's mean, what I, I don't I don't even think they'll call those plays, will they? That's what I said. Run with okay. Nick Sirianni knows. Okay, I don't have that. What I had with Hurts in Minshew. So let me tell you what we're going to do. We got to change it a little bit. That's why I'm saying play t- pay attention to your coaching. The coaching has a game plan that's going to be suited for Minshew, not Hurts. We can still run the ball in a different way. We can still pass the ball in a different way, but this is how we need to do it to cater to the athlete that is at the quarterback position this week. So listen to the coaching, stick to it. Boom. Defense, that offensive line is going to get you where you need to go. Here's what I'm asking. Really okay. last year, the Eagles would run the ball at times, 50 times a game. Yeah. I think they'll, I, I think oh, if, it, if they have any game. chance, if they have any chance to do that this year, I think they'll do it right now. That's this game. That's this game. Yep. Yeah. Protect so the listen, quarterback by running the ball. There you go. Listen to, listen to this. So the Packers Miami is kind of a big game. It's a big game to us. Yes. But then look at the, the Christmas Day. Here's the games they put on. I mean, what's playing at the movie theater? Because you got Denver I'm Broncos versus Rams. Other than the Packers game, I'm not going to the other two. <laughs> if they were movies. Broncos Rams, Bucks Cardinals. Like, are you kidding me? If like, these I, were movies, I'm not going. Other I mean, than the Packers I'm, game. First time in a long time, I'm watching the NBA on Christmas again, man. 100%. What, I don't know who the Lakers are playing. I'm and then we got Chargers about. Colts. Oh my. Hey, let's well let, let's in 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 thirty seconds or less, AG. Okay. Jeff Saturday's tenure with the Colts is now marked with the worst loss in history in the yes. history of the National League. You, I think, a thirty-three point deficit they overcame the Vikings. Where does what do you say to Jeff Saturday now? Okay, we you know we're players. We. It's, was that a result? Because you you had to get up thirty three to nothing to lose thirty. You, you know, give up. You had to get there. Yes. It doesn't seem to me like, and there's no game plan. In other words, that you can have where you go up thirty three and then you blow it, and everyone's like, "Well, this is why you are a real coach." I'm like, "Well, f- they had to score thirty three nothing, man. Like, what are you talking about?" Yeah. What, it's, do you, it's, what do you say? What do you say to that? I say what you say to that is. As as a as a coach or how I'm, I'm just I'm interested in your opinion because you, my, okay. you and I both you know you think player correct gets the coach that makes my, sense but a lot of people don't. my opinion to that game when I sat there and watched the second half where they only scored three points <laughs> that tells me that shows me where somewhere in the leadership so the coaching part panicked and did not refocus and did not adjust accordingly as the game went on because you know as a player that there's going to be a time where the other team, you're up big, that other team is going to make a push. Yep. That other team is going to want to gain momentum and, ta- swing, yep. and take it back. What you do as a coaching staff, we are not giving that them that oh, momentum. We're not going to – we're holding it to, for our lives. So they're going to have to come up with some flea flicker, whatever, crazy play that we are not thinking of to get that momentum back. And even if they try to fight, they're going to fight for it, keep fighting back. You know, so they'll have a I'm touchdown you. here. They'll have a touchdown there. They'll score a field goal. But you know what? They don't get that momentum back. We keep scoring our points where they only scored three in the second half. So that's where – that was that's my opinion watching that game and how it ended for the Vikings and for the Colts. This is what, this is what I take from it. I think it's we're saying the same thing in a different way. So Jeff Saturday's got this team going, and people believe mm-hmm. – they believe yes. it, and they demonstrate yes. that, okay? But what happens is when you're the positive guy all the time, this is a hard thing about being a head coach. And yeah. it doesn't, it's not just applying to your players, it's applying to the other people on your coaching staff. Mm-hmm. When it when shit hits the fan or it's hitting the fan, you have to be able to go over to your defensive coordinator, you have to go over to your offensive coordinator and say, listen, this is what we're doing from now on. Nothing else is working. You know, we're not, we're not, we're not throwing the ball anymore. We're gonna line up behind Quentin Nelson, who's the highest paid left guard in the league, and we're gonna run the ball. Right at there, guys, and we're just gonna. I'm gonna run the clock. There's because there's really there no go. unless you start throwing the ball, shortening the, or lengthening the game, turning mm-hmm. the ball over. The Minnesota Vikings can't score 36 points unless you allow them to score 36 points. Exactly. You know how hard it is to score five touchdowns and a half. Like you know how hard <laughs> yes. that is. Oh yeah. You have to. You have to. You have to shorten the game to do that. You have to have turnover. You have to make mistakes. 
In other words, if you kick them the ball five times in a half, they, and they have to go the yeah. length of the field, you're just playing field position game, yeah. they wouldn't have scored that many points. And it's just like that's what is maybe the most bothersome there is he – I don't know if he has the cachet, the co- whatever it is, to be able to yell at the coordinators and the players and go, man, get your stuff together, get level-headed, mm-hmm. because there's no way this team is going to drop you know that many scoring drives in a row on us unless we give it up. Yeah. Right. And so they give it up. And that's maybe the one thing where I'd say learning experience. It's just unfortunate, man, because, you know, this is a big opportunity. And it's like, oh, dude, 33 points you gave up. I mean, yeah. You, you and only scored three and a, and a half. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, that's tough. I'm with you there 100%. All right, man. Well, right. listen, brother, have a great holiday weekend. You uh, too, as well. Let everybody know they can find you and what's going on in your world. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on uh, Instagram and Twitter, Amon Green. Um, 30 all one word and also on uh, TikTok of mine greens gamers lounge so this weekend Mike I'm just enjoying family and friends we're headed over uh, to my mother-in-law's house she's right down the highway in, in Wrightstown get some good food and cooking what kind and, of food what, what's like the big uh, what's the big meal so how my wife's family you know Italian uh, heritage and so they do on Christmas Eve and I think it's New Year's too or it's Christmas they do like see like a whole bunch of seafood oh. so it's scallops it's lobster it's shrimp oh, it's it's uh herring it's tilapia it's everything fish wise really? you know to help bring in i think it's a new year thing but it doesn't you know we do big big dishes on uh, th- uh christmas as well and ex- obviously exchanging gifts as well on christmas eve so that sounds that sounds fantastic what about yourself awesome. thank you uh i just got you know i just got a new trigger and okay. uh and my pops is in town and we just went i just bought a huge rib roast so i bought like a mm. 10 pound rib roast so i got bone in rib roast I bought like another couple pounds of ribs. My wife, so we make so we make those. Okay. We eat those probably Christmas Eve, and then my wife makes uh, uh, tamales, homemade tamales, Ooh. which are I'm telling you are like the best things we have. Oh, I'm glad I'm gonna be down in Houston. I could uh, come right on up. Yeah, man, homemade tamales and a bunch of Mexican food. Oh, it's it's so we eat really well. Probably a bottle or two of scotch. Of course, um, of course. responsibly, responsibly, yeah, and uh, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. So sounds like it, bro. Well, sounds listen. Like have a great Christmas. Have a great holiday. Uh, happy holidays, to everybody out there. And we will see you guys after this Packers. Hopefully, Packers victory. Victory next week. Next week. Peace out. <laughs>